Are you trying to get more information on what the problems are from high homocysteine? Maybe you're trying to understand if there's an independent risk for high homocysteine to your health outside of the deficiency of B12 and folate. My name is Dr. Tara Nella, and in this video, we're going to look at those specific things. What health conditions are you more susceptible for when you have high homocysteine? And specifically, if those are independent of B12 folate or B6 deficiency. Again, my name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know, make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, or diagnosis. I'm making these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on with your health. So if you like this kind of information about nutrition, health, hormones, etc., click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at problems from elevation in homocysteine. So to understand the problems that come from elevation in homocysteine levels, we first need to look at the research to understand the relationship of high homocysteine on human health. First, so what constitutes high homocysteine? Different labs have different measurements or different parameters for what's considered high homocysteine. And you do need to take note of when you're doing the test is for, in terms of being fasted or fed. So usually you want to check this when you're in the fasting state. And some labs will designate anything over 10 micromoles per liter. Others will designate above 12 as high. And in order to have hyperhomocysteinemia, the blood test needs to indicate a level over 15. So you can still have high levels, but in actual hyperhomocysteinemia level is going to be above 15. Optimal levels are usually going to be around 7 to 9. So what does the research say about the impact of high homocysteine on human health? Basically, hyperhomocysteinemia is a problem with too much homocysteine in the blood. That seems obvious, but this homocysteine is an amino acid that's floating around in the blood, and it's changed into different molecules as part of a cyclical pattern where one molecule turns into another and then turns into another and eventually turns back into homocysteine. And these steps flow through enzymatic reactions. And those enzymes require certain B vitamins to do that or cofactors to do that. When the levels are high ongoing, it's thought that the homocysteine actually damages the blood vessels. And so high homocysteine levels have been associated with various health conditions. I'm going to tell you about all of them, and I'm going to highlight a few of them. So first, let me just list out the health conditions that hyperhomocysteinemia or high homocysteine is associated with. So cardiovascular disease, which is really important because it's the number one thing that shortens our lifespan as humans in the United States and other developed countries as well. Venous thrombosis, so also known as DVT. This may be also linked in with the cardiovascular part of it mental health and cognitive impairment, bone problems, which we'll come back to, eye problems, complications of pregnancy, and cancer. So now let's look at a few of these in a little more detail and highlights what some of the studies show about these. So the link between cardiovascular disease and venous thrombosis is that the homocysteine is thought to damage the blood vessels in such a way that it creates more of a risk for clotting. And the exact mechanism behind this is not really clearly de delineated, but there is this very common and clear association with hyperhomocysteinemia and DVTs and cardiovascular disease. The mental health problems and cognitive impairment, we're going to go into more detail on this in another video, but basically it's probably linked to an increased risk of depression and anxiety due to the effects of not the homocysteine itself, but the deficiency of the B vitamins causing homocysteine to be high. Bone problems. So the bone problems I was not actually aware of prior to doing a little bit of research on this one, but high homocysteine levels are thought to weaken the bones and increase the risk for osteoporosis. There are several studies showing this, and I'll put a link to some of them in the description. 
One study found that women with higher homocysteine levels had lower bone mineral density and higher risk for fractures. And the authors suggested that the homocysteine may be playing some role on collagen cross-linking and bone reabsorption. Other studies have suggested the same thing, but there may, it may be simpler than that, that there's just a, an overall nutritional deficiency in these people. And people with high homocysteine are not only deficient in B vitamins, but also calcium, vitamin D, and other things. These studies weren't adjusted for in that way. Eye problems and high homocysteine are associated again with the damage of the homocysteine to the blood vessels. So this seems to be the reoccurring theme for hyperhomocysteinemia, the main impact that it seems to have independent of deficiency in B vitamins is damaging the blood vessels through some pro-inflammatory thing. Same thing with the pregnancy. Yeah, you're going to have more complications like preeclampsia due to the high homocysteine's effect on the blood vessels. But of course, pregnancy is also requires a lot of genetics to you know make new DNA, making new cells, new tissues, nervous system tissues, etc. And if you have a high homocysteine, it suggests a B12 or folate deficiency, which is problematic for someone that is making a new baby inside of them. So it's important test for people to check if they are getting pregnant or planning on it. Similar kind of thing with cancer in that if you don't have enough of your active folate in B12, you're not going to be able to make your DNA base pairs the way you should. And that can lead to substitutions of RNA in place of DNA. All right. So how'd I do? Did that give you a better understanding of the problems from elevation in homocysteine? Hopefully it did. If you have additional questions on this topic, drop them in the comment section and do check out those links in the description if you want more information on any of those studies.